Every so often I see people saying that an adventure bike is just a cyclocross bike with a bigger slick tire. But the problem is, that's not really the case. Any given adventure bike and cyclocross from any different company are not the same. For the purpose of this video, I'm using the B85 from Felt in a size 54 and the F55X from Felt as well in a size 55. So like I said, these bikes are not the same. Big tire, big tire, space for big tire. That's kind of where a lot of the similarities end. It wouldn't make sense for a company to make the exact same bike and call it two different things, expecting them to sell more of them. And what I mean by that is bicycle geometry. So when you're looking at an adventure bike, what you're gonna see a longer wheelbase, taller head tube, a slacker head tube with more rake in the fork, which means more trail, which means it's gonna be super stable at high speeds and going downhill. Along with that, you're going to have a bottom bracket that's much lower to the ground, which also helps with keeping the bike significantly more stable. A lot of these are really good attributes for a bike that you're gonna ride off-road on really rough terrain, going down some maybe long, treacherous, fire road descents. It has a lot lower of a standover at this area to make sure that the seat post comes out a little bit farther for added vertical compliance, allowing a seat post to flex a little bit more and keep you isolated from any sort of road vibrations. Basically what this bike does is puts you in a really relaxed position and allows you to ride over really rough gross terrain for long, long miles. Now, compare that to a cross bike. This has space for such big tire, but it's for mud clearance. Cyclocross deals with a lot of mud and it's really annoying to have it all build up. Now the head tube on this is significantly shorter. The head tube angle is slightly steeper. The rake on the fork is also a little bit shorter, which means the trail is smaller. That allows you to get around those switchback turns and those really tight corners that you get into in a cyclocross course. The top tube length on this is longer, the seat tube any higher, with the top tube meeting it at a much higher spot. This is for two reasons. One, to put you in a more aggressive position. Another is to give you the space in this front triangle to be able to shoulder the bike. But the bottom bracket is also higher off the ground on a cross bike to deal with those pedaling through corner situations, riding off cambers. A cross bike is designed to be a race bike, not a really long mile killer like an adventure bike. This is meant to be raced for 45 minutes to one hour plus one lap. Cross bike's gonna put you in a much more aggressive lean forward position. So when you're looking at a cyclocross cross bike versus an adventure bike, don't let the components that are bolted onto it trick you into thinking that they're the same thing because it's not the components that matter here. It's the geometry of the bike that determines what it's good for. Now I know I'm gonna get the question, can I use my cross bike as an adventure bike and can I use my adventure bike as a cross bike? Of course you can. You can do whatever you want with any bike you have. I do it all the time. Just know that you're better suited to be racing cyclocross on a cross bike and riding dirt fire roads on an adventure bike. Probably a more comfortable bike to do any sort of real intense long rides on. And if you're wondering which bike you should get, Get the one that you think you're gonna do more of. So basically, get the bike that sounds the best to you and make sure you test ride it so that you know what you're gonna like. I hope that helps and I hope that clears that up a little bit. Let me know if you have any more questions in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them. I answer everybody's comments and we'll see you real soon. Thanks a lot for watching.
Sweetheart. 